There's been a lot of buzz around the Diamond DA50 since it was released, but for many pilots, the excitement all faded away when they found out the asking price. So the real question is, is the Diamond DA50 worth the price tag today? In this video, we're gonna give you a full walk around and Mike's also gonna be taking us for a flight review as well. So with the flight test, we're gonna do the whole startup procedure. We're gonna do taxi checks, before takeoff checks, we're going to do the whole flight, the climb out up to 3,000 feet, do some general handling, system checks, check out the autopilot, then do an approach into land. And this Diamond DA50 is on the market today, so if you're looking to skip the waiting list and get a nearly new aircraft for way under the asking price, this could be the one for you. So let's get into the video. So with the outside, first of all, you'll notice how large a DA50 is. The fuselage is actually the same as a DA62, just without the third row of seats. It's got a huge wingspan, it's actually 44 feet, which compared to an SR22 is an, an additional six feet in length. These really long wings give you really good stability in flight. They also have vortex generators on the end of the wing to really help with the landing and takeoff performance as well. Because Diamond are really focused on safety, these wings really help with the glide ratio. And they actually have twin spars, which also protect the fuel tanks in the event of an accident. Underneath that huge engine cowling, we'll find a 300 horsepower Continental V6. It's liquid cooled, twin turbocharged and runs on Jet A1 fuel. So it's really efficient. It's also controlled by Fadex. So inside you'll find a single lever. You only have to set the power and the Fadex system will take control of everything else, which we'll show you during the flight review. As we said, it runs on Jet A1 fuel. You have 25 gallons of fuel either side. On the front of the wings, you'll find the TKS panels along with the heated prop. This aircraft is fully approved for flight into known icing, so you can fly all year round in any seasons. I do really like the fact it has the DA62 size fuselage because you get a nice big opening rear door for the rear passengers, unlike uh, a Cirrus SR22. You have folding rear seats, which are really simple to fold down, giving you a massive access to a big luggage compartment. Although it does have seating and seat belts for five people, it's probably more comfortable for four people. I love the interior design. You have really nice leather seats with red stitching and diamond embroidery. There's carbon fiber and leather absolutely everywhere. It's designed really well and really nicely. It feels really premium. This particular aircraft has some really nice features like built-in air conditioning, iPad mounts. It's really comfortable and it's made for all weathers, so it really is great for some long-range touring. It's got so many features inside, so we're going to go for a short flight now and give you a full review. Okay, most of the checks have been done outside, so we're going to just carry on with some checks on the inside now. First things first, turn the battery master on. Make sure the gear's down. Adjustable rudder pedals. Electrically adjustable in these, which are really good. As you can see, feet go front and back. Same with Joe's on the right there. Have to go quite far forward for him. <laughs> We're going to check the flaps. So, take off flaps in transit. Set the take off, landing flaps in transit. Yep, and all the way up. All good. Okay, gear test. Stall test. MFD has got power, that's all good. Fuel quantity is fine, temperature's checked, time and service is noted, strobe lights on, taxi position lights on. Cool. So we're going to go for an engine start now. So propeller's clear, brakes are set, engine master on. We've got to wait for the glow plug light to go out there. And once that's out, we are clear to start. Oh, press the check. All good. Okay, cool. So, uh, oil pressure's all good, RPM, fuel valve, set to emergency, the check. Okay. So we did alternated tests now, so we're going to do the next thing. We're going to look at the voltage over here at the amps. We're going to check them, we're going to turn on the Essentials bus. Then we're going to turn on the P-Time stall heat. We're going to check that the alternator number two is also rising. It is. Then the essentials bus is going to go off. And amps are decreasing, which is good. That's going to go off back to normal. Put the fuel 
fuel valve back to normal. And the Asionics master can go on and we can hear ourselves. So we've done most of our checks inside now. Uh, Mike's running through his checklist. As I mentioned outside, this, this engine is controlled by FADEC and it's got four ECU, so you obviously have one power lever. Um, and Mike's going to run through the FADEC checks, which you'll see now. So, yeah, so what Joe means by the FADEC stuff, this, because this is a diesel engine, um, they normally have a, a control unit which controls obviously all the runnings of the engine. Because it's now in an aeroplane, uh, they have to have two lots of everything now, backups. So, what we're going to do in a second is we're going to check both systems to make sure they work. Uh, and then also at the same time it checks the propeller for, fu for full function. So, I'm now going to press and hold the FADEC test button and then you're going to see a load of cautions come up here and what it's going to do is go it's going to talk about ECU A and ECU B which is obviously one of two, e um, two, two ECUs. Then it will check the, uh, it will bring the RPM up, uh, it will fail one ECU and then it will check the propeller, then it will fail the other ECU, check the propeller, then go back to normal. So let's just do that now. There's one failed. Propellers cycling. Then the other one's failed. Propellers cycling. And that is the test complete. So everything's good. So so what would have been traditionally three levers, checking your prop, checking your mixture, yep. is now push and hold one button. Exactly. And it does everything for you. Yeah, that's it, mate. All good. So uh, emergency fuel pump coming on next. It's all good. Manson Radio, Golf Sierra Tango Uniform Mike. Golf Uniform Mike, Manson Radio. Golf Uniform Mike is uh, on a taxiway outside Helix again. We're going to go for, we're going to take off from a 2 8. We're going to go for a short flight now. And we're going to be off to the south around Deal or Sandwich area for probably about 30 minutes. And then we'll come back into land. Uniform Mike, QH 1025, and uh, no reported traffic. We're done for the day. Copy 1025 and copy the traffic. Uniform Mike. So I'm set full power, we're going to rotate around 65-70 knots, climb at uh, 90 knots and immediately after takeoff we'll be get 100% um, power for 5 minutes maximum. So when we've got a good altitude and the gears up, I'm going to bring the power back to 90%, then we're going to carry on the climb and the flaps will come up, then we'll carry on the climb all the way up to 3000 feet. Uh, if we have any issues before the end of the runway, we're going to land on the runway. Any issues after that, we're going to land dead ahead within 30 degrees of the nose and the glide speed is 94 knots. Pay for it. Golf uniform might take it off runway 28. Right, power set. T's and P's are in the green. Speeds a lot. Uh, 60 knots. Smooth as anything. Yeah, it's really yep. smooth. All right, no available runway gear coming up. Bring the power back to ninety percent. Lower the nose to uh, 90 knots, flaps coming up. Okay, passing through 1,300 feet. All the T's and P's are looking good. Yeah, so look at 90% at 90 power. Still in the climb now, 90 knots, we're burning 15 gallons an hour. Any other piston engine aircraft would be, eight, well, big piston engine aircraft would be 18 gallons at least, 18 to 20 gallons in the climb. So being a diesel, you obviously save quite a bit of fuel. Again, when you compare it to a Cirrus, yeah. climbing out that far, you're going to be doing yeah, 20 gallons an hour with that big field 550 engine. Yeah, at least. It's so stable. Yeah, and really smooth, isn't it? Those wings. All right, so 3,200 feet, 75% power. Burning 12 and a half gallons per hour there on the right hand side. Still are off the top of climb checks now, so those two can go off. Emergency fuel pump can go off. T's and P's are all good. And the K 
power plant could be closed. I love the fact it gives you gallons remaining endurance range. Yeah. You can see we're slowly increasing now for 141 knots. Very strong on the controls. So you can give it some real good control input there. And um, it's very stable. So if we go for, let's go for a high speed cruise and see what we can do. Let's do 80%. 82. 81%. The max you can do is 90, but you don't want to go too crazy. So at 80% power, we're now burning 13.6 gallons an hour. And we are doing 148 knots indicated, 149, 154 true airspeed. Which is really good. So now let's do some slow flight. So I'm just going to bring that power back a bit. A bit now. Going to slow the aeroplane down. So the good thing on it on a diamond, or this diamond in particular, the landing gear can come down up to 160 knots, which is um, which is quite high. So the first thing you do, obviously, to slow yourself down, do 130, 130 now. So we're going to lower the landing gear. That's going to lose us 20 knots, give or take, straight away. And I'm going to trim for that. Now we're in the flap speed below 133, the first stage. See how much the visibility increases now the first stage of flaps in because it's lowered the nose there a little bit. So I'm going to try and keep that altitude there, there we go. Now we're in that, we're going to bring the full stage of flap in below 121. Okay, and we'll just do a stall and see how she see how she feels. So bring the parallel back to idle now. I'll bring the nose up. First thing we're going to hear is a stall warner. There we go. Happens yet? Nothing. Cool. Still nothing. Going to buff it now. There she goes. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Full stall that was. <laughs> Bring it back up. And recover. There we go. Caught me off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was still st so stable, even down to, I think you, when I last looked, you was at 50 knots. Yeah, exactly. So in reality, you, you would you would recover at the first sign of the stall, which is obviously the stall warner there. Um, you wouldn't take it all the way, but I thought I'd take it all the way so you can see what it's like. Okay, so let's, um, let's try the autopilot out now. So we're going to press AP. Your damper comes on as well, it's got a your damper. It's on the heading mode at the moment, which is perfect for us. I'm not going to put a route in because we're only going local, but you can adjust it on the heading there, which is great. And it's so smooth, it's completely effortless. Yeah. I mean, although there looks like a lot going on, there actually isn't. No. And it, it's really reduced your workload. So, I'm actually quite new to the Garmin NXI. Um, Garmin 1000 NXI, and actually the Garmin 1000 anyway, I've got loads of hours in it with using the Garmin 1000, but it's a really intuitive piece of avionics, um, everything you need is in front of you, the NXI is brilliant, bit of a sharper screen, very fast um, in terms of loading up and changing screens and that sort of stuff, which is great, you've got all of the good en engine instruments there, which is um, very easy and uh, quick to see exactly what you want to do, uh, the map's brilliant, um, even when you're on the map, you can see all of the engine stuff there on the left-hand side, which is very helpful. Um, on my screen, obviously, we've got traffic as well set up on the left-hand side there. And with this aeroplane, we have ADS-B um, uh, out, so that brings up all of the uh, ADS-B traffic, which is helpful. Uh, alongside these Garmin's as well, obviously, you can make if one of these fails, you can make one of them the primary, whichever one fails. Uh, and also, you've got this backup instrument here as well the worst would have happened, that's got its own power source. And um, that should get you down. Right, so preparation for the landing, we're going to slow the aeroplane down a little bit now. We're going to do a left base to join uh, runway 28, which is uh, the base, the start of the base is basically on the nose, and about a mile or two. We're going to slow the aeroplane down. We're going to descend at the same time. Put all the lights on. Emergency fuel pump coming on. 
All the T's and P's are in the green. That's all good. Okay, so speed checks, uh, landing gear coming down first. It slows you down quite nicely. Ready for the uh, flap, and actually we've got we're actually under the flap speed as well, so we can go uh, flaps one. Council Radio, Golf Uniform Mike, it's left base to land 28. Golf Uniform Mike, uh, QFE 1020. 1020, Golf Uniform Mike. So the speed's coming back now, which is nice. Still descending a little bit. I want to approach at sort of 90 knots, 75 to 80 knots over the, over the line. Now we've got three greens, all the lights are on. I want to go full flap now. And aim for 80 knots. Golf Uniform Mike's final to land 2 eight. Uniform Mike. Alright, we've got three greens, full flap, all the lights are on, clear to land. So we want about 75 knots over the line, give or take, so 80 knots now. Because it's got really good training link landing gear, we just want to let it float a little bit and it will just touch down nice and smoothly. Power's coming off now, we're going to pull the nose off a little bit and just going to hold it. And let that nose come down gently. There we go. Lovely. The other thing this Garmin NXI has got is obviously built-in checklists. Um, it's your preference really. I quite like using the old school paper checklist, but if you want to use a digital checklist, it's on the screen there as well. So if you're asking who the Diamond DA50 is really for, it's perfect for owner pilots, business owners who want to take that step up from your traditional PA28 or 170. So those points in mind, if you're looking to spend close to a million pounds on any aeroplane, then actually a Diamond DA50 is really good for you, especially if you want to consider the performance, the comfort and the safety factor of this aeroplane. And this particular Diamond DA50 is on the market today, so if you're looking for an aircraft with under 70 hours from you and you want to skip the huge waiting list, this could be the perfect time. It's live on the website, so please get in touch and you can come and see it today. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one.